We getting ready to hear a, a, a treat. Thank God for Lady Lisa being in the house of God one more time. Finna feed us. And we finna, we ready to eat. Hallelujah. We ready. I thank God for the just uh, service on tonight. And those, we gonna introduce those that don't know her. We gonna introduce those that do know her. A sweet lady. You got to get to know her. She's so caring. I mean that from my heart. This young lady here, she think about all you gotta do is say something, and she on it. You can say you you can be thinking about doing something, and she right there on it to help you out. Thank you, Lord. you ain't even gotta ask. And I'm like, Lord, that, thank God for I thank God for her. Yes. So we let's put our hands together for the word on tonight. Hallelujah. For Sister Lisa, Lady Lisa King, to bring us the word. I'm glad for what God is doing. Thank God for Brother Reuben. It really is a blessing to see everybody here tonight. Thank God for the people. He said where two or three are gathered in his name, he would be in the midst. And so it doesn't matter if the pastor here, the pastor gone. He said two or three, if you gather in his name, he said he was going to be in the midst. And I thank God for him just being here tonight. I thank God it's not about the number, but it's about God being in the place. And I'm glad that he's here. I know he's here because he came on the inside of me. He's here with me. And I just thank God for it. We're going to look away to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity tonight to come before your people. Such a great people. You loved your people so much that you thought enough of us to give us a shepherd. And God, we thank you for you being the good shepherd, but we thank you for what you have given us on this day. And we ask you to sing your word tonight. Let it minister grace to the hearers. Let it be of edification to those that are fighting the good fight of faith. We ask you to lift up the bow down heads, strengthen the feeble knees. Those, those that need help, give help tonight. Those that need strength, strengthen tonight. Those that need courage, grant courage tonight. Those that are holding on, give them strength to endure hardness as a good soldier. In Jesus' name we pray tonight. Let all the people say amen. 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 Thank God for his word that went forth on Tuesday. You all can be seated. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and will open the door, he said, I will come in. It ain't no I might. He said, I will come in. So I'm telling you, I thank God for even Brother Reuben's testimony. Listen, you know if he can stop the rain, he can keep your mind. If he can keep the rain from coming down, he can bless you to do the right thing. And I just thank God for that. I thank God for the great move. God is moving. And he do things to increase our confidence. So you know, listen, he did this. He hear you when you pray. I thank God for that. I thank God for him being a God that hear us. He's not made of stone, wood, gold, or silver. I'm talking about we serve the true and the living God that hear us when we talk to him. All right? I praise him for that. That's so good. Because there are times when you need to talk to somebody and there might not be nobody around physically. But you can talk to your father and he'll hear you right away. Immediately. He's listening. And I thank God for that. He's so good. I thank God when he knocked, I opened my heart and he came in. And that's not a one-time thing. It's continual. It's perpetual. It happens all the time. So when you believe, come on now. When you believe, he's coming in. And he's coming in with what you need. Hallelujah. He's coming in to meet that need. Whatever it may be. And I just thank God for that. I thank God for Sister Valerie Lorna Brown. God is really doing some things for her. And as he's blessing her, guess what? He's blessing us. As he's blessing her, he's blessing us. What he do for one, he do for all. And I thank God for that. God is moving all throughout this land. 
land, not just in St. Louis, not just in the cities and the states and the, and the places that we know, but he's moving all throughout this land. He has many that have not bowed. And I thank God for that. He has many that have not taken that mark of the beast. That's not going after things, going after money, going after this and going after that. But he's blessing those whose hope is in him. And I thank God for that. I thank God for being begotten again into a lively hope. Hallelujah. He's alive. And he's alive forevermore. So I thank God again for what he's doing. I thank God for his people. Yeah. God loves his people. Yes, he, he loves us, I'm telling you. And he, we are the apple of his eye. And he will go through great lengths to get to us when we need him. All you got to do is call on him. And he has no respect of persons. He can hear the preacher. He can hear the teacher. He can hear the usher. He can hear the Sunday school teacher. He can hear, he can hear the, uh, the basket holder. Come on, he hear the musicians. What a mighty God we serve. And I mean to tell you, I'm looking at Brother Ruben. Look, he'll put a smile on your face. Everybody that was in here, I looked around and everybody was smiling. Everybody had a smile on their face. Jesus did that. Everything didn't go right today, but Jesus did that. The sun wasn't shining, but Jesus was. Hallelujah. God is wonderful. He's wonderful. And I'll tell you, when I start thinking about his goodness and what he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God for choosing me. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And because he did, I owe him. And I owe him my best. And guess what? I want to give him my best. I want to give him my best. Because he deserves the best. And the more you give, the more he gives to you. And I praise him for it. Tonight we're going to be in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. I thank God for this word of God. Because we live by every word that come out of his mouth. This book is him. I don't care if Moses was the writer. This book is him. If the apostle said it, guess what? It came from him. And I thank God that they didn't get so beside themselves because they were being used to think that it was them that was doing anything. They turned around, uh-uh, we are men just like you are. We are men just like you. We don't get beside ourselves. Stand up on your feet before you have God do something. They would not take his glory. The prophets, they wouldn't take what belonged to God. They gave him his glory and they let the people know, thus said the Lord. And that's what we are. I'm telling you, we are witnesses. And you should be able to tell somebody what thus said the Lord. He said he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Be a witness and tell somebody that. God is good. God is good. And he wants his people to be strong. Because he's going to use us to win the world. Those that are looking for a change. Those that are really looking for a better way. That's tired of the way that they're going. The people of God have got to be strong so that you can be a help. So that you can be present. That's right. Sometimes we get so caught up in everything else that you're not even present. You don't even recognize a need when it's right in front of you. But God wants us to be present so that when a soul is crying out or somebody needs some strength, when your brother and your sister are going through and you recognize they done lost their consistency, he want to use you, but you got to be strong. You can't be saying, God understand, he know your heart. Go ahead and stay on at home. He see, he know what's best. Tell him to strive. To press. But you got to have strength. You got to know that too. It won't even come to you. If your mind ain't on Jesus, it won't even come to you of how to be a help to somebody that need help. Uh -huh. 
So in Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to start at the notable verse 10. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh. Say it with me. Flesh. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole, he had to say it again, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod, walking with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let's give God a hand praise for his word. My brother, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In order for you to be strong when things, when opposition is coming against you, it's all about that mindset. It's about what you put your mind on when things are coming up against you. And your mind has to be on things that are lovely, just, honest, pure, of a good report. He said, think on these things. And I don't know nothing that's honest, lovely, just all the time. Everything about it is good. But that word of God and the things that he has done. So in you being strong, you got to put your mind on something. Because I'm telling you, you all know this. No matter who you are and where you are, we are going to have text. We're going to have tribulations. We're going to have trouble. As somebody said, and I second that, you had troubles before Christ came into your life. And guess what? You figured things out. You didn't fall out and go to wine and then crying and all of that. You came up with a way to do what you wanted to do. When that devil was driving you and had you thinking you had to do what he wanted you to do, you figured out a way. But God wants our trust and our confidence to be in him. To say, Lord, whatever you say, I'll do it. As they used to say, your wish is my command. Lord, what will you have me to do? But you got to have your mind on him to even speak those things. So he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know how many people, you go to Facebook and you will see people talking about these, they're showing these videos just about flesh, talking about the flesh, and they have no understanding of what the flesh is. But the Bible just declared here, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. People think that the body is the problem. Your body is not your problem. It's what's in your heart. It's the spirit behind the things that are in your heart that is motivating you to do the things you do. Jesus wanted them to know. He, he revealed it to his apostles. And he let them know who the wrestle was with. It's not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against powers. I'm talking about, listen, the enemy has power over those that do not believe. He wants you to think it's you, but it's him that's doing it all. 
this one or two powers you're yielding to one or the other. It's going to be God or the enemy. One or, uh, one or the other is your father. So who you yield yourself to, that's who's serving ye are. But I want you to know that you don't have to yield to principalities. You don't have to yield to the rulers of the darkness. He said, your wrestle is not against flesh and blood. Uh -huh. Yeah, we see a person. Right. We see people when we're going through things. Right. But understand, believers, unbelievers, that your wrestle is not with people. What you, That's true. what you are going up against, you can't even see. Uh -huh. Now, I'll tell you what, you can feel them. Uh -huh. You can feel that demonic power. You can't see them with your natural eye. But in the spirit, he will allow you to see the invisible. You're not wrestling against a person. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why he told us that we can live in heavenly places right now. It's above the enemy. I'm telling you, the Lord calls his people to triumph. And guess what? We soar like eagles above the troubles. It don't mean that they won't come, but you can get so far above it that it can't even touch you. It can't even take your mind there. We serve a mighty God. He said, take unto you the whole armor. I'm telling you, he said he had to say it twice. And it's because you need the whole thing. I'm telling you, don't think just because you got this helmet on, that's all you need. Uncle Sam, prime example. When you get into that army after you get your training, because you're gonna get some training now. That's right. Before they send the, before they send them people to whatever military service they're gonna serve in, whatever division, right. they prepare them first. Oh, you going to boot camp. Right. And you're gonna get some good old training. Yes. And guess what that training does? It prepares you for battle. Uh-huh. It prepares you for battle. So when Uncle Sam get them, listen, he changed their whole identity. You could have had dreads. You could have had a shag. You could have had some good long hair. Oh, but they going to transform you. You going to look like a new creature. Most of them people, when they come back, their families don't even recognize them. Mm. Boy, you been changed. Your spirit be different. Your walk is different. You ever notice how confident they walk? And when they around you, they looking at you like, hey, I'm, re I'm on. I'm ready at any time. I'm prepared for your shenanigans. So the army, the natural army prepares people. They prepare them for battle. They don't just get them in and make them look pretty. Because they know that they got a purpose for them. God has a purpose for every one of us. Those that don't even know yet, he has a purpose for them. And so what God does, he bring you, he engrafts you in. And then he fill you with his word. And so what Uncle Sam does, he don't lead them to themselves. He give them armor, don't he? That's right. That's right. They get armor. They get uh, a vest. That's right. That's right. They got their breastplate. Oh, and he give them weapons too. Right. He don't. He don't send them out there half done. If you go out there half done and you if something happened to you, it's because you didn't hold to. And so what happens is he give them armor and. 
they do not go out into battle without that whole armor on. He said, put it on. Put the whole armor on. This armor is not for us to style in and to say we got it. Ooh, I got it. So, but then when trouble comes, you don't even use it. What's the purpose of it? It don't even come to you pulling out the holster and use it. That armor, that helmet, is to protect their heads. Your mind. When you got this armor on, when you got this helmet on, when the devil come on, what, you, you got your helmet on one. But then on top of that, you got a shield. So when you see them fiery darts coming, use your shield. But your mind got to be on battle for you to do those things. If you worried about, oh, shoot, my favorite show come on at 7 o'clock. I can't miss that. You got your mind on that. Oh, I need to get to the grocery store. My husband, my wife, I got to do this and that for them. And then you don't even realize here come a, here come a test that quick. And because your mind is on everything else, bing, here come that uh, that uh, what they call the the dark. What do they call it? Uh, the arrow. Here come an arrow. Right when you ain't thinking, boom. Because you didn't have your helmet on. But God said, the brother said, put on the whole armor of God, not a little bit of it, not one or two things. He said the whole armor. If he said it, it's because you need the whole thing. And so many people, they got one part, but then don't use the other part. He said, put it on. I'm not going to do it for you. Uncle Sam, don't put your gear on for you. You got to do that. They teach you, but it's something you have to do because your sergeant is not going to always be around. That lieutenant ain't going to always be around. So they teach you so that you know what to do when it's time for battle. And that's the same thing. Understand who your battle is against. And that means you got to be prepared all the time. You don't have time to be wondering. You don't have time for your mind to be idle. You don't have to be, t you don't have time to be caught up in the busy bee club. You don't have time for that. Look, he said, behold, he stand at the door and he knock. But how can you hear him if you're full of folly? If you're full of mischief? You won't hear him. And this is a disadvantage when you don't hear him. Because you can't get your orders, you can't get your direction if you don't hear him. He said, wherefore take unto you the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. All of us has an evil day. And the evil day is when the tempter comes. When the tempter comes to tempt you. Can you stand? If you got the whole armor on, you will. He said, he started talking about this armor. And I'm not going to go into that. But I thank God for what we have. Because everything that he has given us, it comes against. It'll stand against the wiles of the enemy. The enemy does have power, but not over the believer. Not to those that's holding to the word of God. Not to those that's yielding to God and being obedient. We have power over him. But all it takes is for you to step out of the bounds. Stay in the bounds of your habitation. And a lot of 
people don't realize, yeah, you got your helmet on, but you in the wrong place. You got the breastplate and the sword, but you in the wrong place. Pastor, I want you to get for me. I thank God because it's important for everybody to know. If you're listening in, it's important for you to know what your wrestle is against, who you're going up against. This was, there was a great war in heaven. It was a great war. And listen, God kicked a third. He threw them out from heaven. Okay? Keep that in mind. Pastor, read for me 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter 5 and 8. Amen. 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 Let me get to it. Hallelujah. Okay, come on, Pastor. Read that for me. Be sober. Uh-huh. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil. Uh-huh. As a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. He said, be sober. Yes. You got to be alert. You cannot be drunk and overcharged with the cares of this life and think you're going to catch the enemy. He said, be sober. Be vigilant. Be on guard. Pay attention. You know, we tell our children, you know, you got everybody in this age, you got everybody got their cell phones, and people, they keep their head down. They driving, and they got their phone in their hand. You riding through a not-so-good neighborhood, or you riding somewhere where somebody could be plotting on you, and you got your head in the phone. You're not paying attention. Right. And guess what? When danger comes, you won't even see it coming. Amen. Because something else has your attention. You're not alert. Thank you. And we always tell our children, look, put that phone down and pay attention to your surroundings. Look what's going on around you. When you are going through things, notice, pay attention. Is this a test? Be sober. Be vigilant. Be alert so you can be able to use the weapons that you have. He said, because your adversary, the flesh, your adversary, your boss, who is the adversary? The devil. He is the thief that come to kill, steal, and destroy. Just because you come to know Christ, don't exempt you from the devil coming at your mind. It don't exempt you from troubles. But what it does, it gives you power. It gives you the, ob the ability to triumph. To have the victory in your life every single day. Not just with the things you do, but the thoughts that come to your mind. This word is powerful. It is the voice of the Lord. His voice is powerful. It's so powerful that when you pray, he can say, no rain. And it happened. Yeah. That's how powerful his voice is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you got to be on guard. Be alert. Mm -hmm. And know that your adversary, the devil, know who is behind that evil day that's gonna, that you're going to face. Everybody's ha everybody has them. Everybody has them. But again, the difference is having the greater one on the inside of us. Because your adversary, the devil, don't fall for this stuff where people got try to have you thinking and believing 
that your body is your problem because it's not. The devil is behind your body though because he will motion you. The motions of sin will direct you. But that's not your problem. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's principalities that you're dealing with. So he said, because your adversary, you got to do this because you have an adversary. The devil does not bless anybody. Everything he does, he's coming with the curse behind it. God want his people to understand what blessings are. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and don't add no sorrow. Everything you can put your eyes on. Everything you can touch can add some sorrow. So I'm telling you, don't look at that call like it's a blessing. It's just a thing. Because just as sure as you got it today, it can be gone tomorrow. As sure as you call it a blessing today, the next day you got to spend a grin to get it fixed. And you got to try to drum up a way to get it fixed. Now your mind is on that. Who's behind it? But you called it a blessing. These things, the Lord didn't see it like that. He saw them as things. The Lord want his people to talk different from the world. Look, he said, come out of the world. Don't let your conversation, he said, in all manner of conversation, be ye holy. Now, we know that the world's conversation cannot be holy because they don't have the holy one on the inside. But he want our conversation to be different from the world. Even when people are talking about scriptures, we he want us to have understanding. That's why he pulled his disciples to the side. He could have had a whole multitude. But guess what he did? He pulled them 12 to the side. And he taught them what that parable meant. So when he's doing and he's talking and he's speaking, he wants your understanding to be different from the world. You can't be talking about you blessed and they saying they blessed too. How does that work? How are you blessed and I'm striving and, and, and fighting principalities? I'm coming against the rulers of darkness and you talking about you blessed? And I'm denying myself and sacrificing? Our conversation, he want us to have an understanding. And you ought to be so different from the world that they want what you have. That's true. That's true. You ain't got to try to force it on them. They're going to want it. That's when you're not like them. But the problem becomes when we tend to try to win them by acting like them. That's true. But I'm going to tell you something. As sure as you have the Holy Ghost, the Lord will say, uh-uh. You want to win them? Don't try to act like them. Don't do that. Be different. Ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. You light now. Woo! And light is different from darkness. He said, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion. Who want to be in a cage with a lion? Anybody in their right mind? I know you have seen these shows with these people that love these lions and stuff like that. But if you in your right mind, you understand they can snap at any time. They can see you as food and attack. Don't be in the den with a lion like that and the Lord ain't with you. He said, as a roaring lion, that devil wanted you bad. He, listen, he has.
made us all from the believer to the unbeliever. And just as sure as God delivered you, he mad about it because he didn't have a chance to destroy you before the Lord came into your life. But don't think he gave up on you. As a roaring lion, he wants you back so he can destroy you. Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about to do what? Seeking whom he may devour. Does that sound like somebody that want to do you good? You think his children want to do you good? Because they got his spirit. So they can be smiling, hee-hawing, skinning, and grinning. But they have the spirit of their father. And they don't even know that the adversary is working through them. Says he's seeking whom he may devour. He's just looking for you to get out of bounds. He's looking for you to be disobedient. He's waiting on you to walk disorderly. He waiting on me. Yes. That's right, what you He's licking his chops. Y'all have seen that. Seen a lion, and they see some people, and they just walking real slow, but they watching. And they go to licking their lips, because they can taste you. All right. All right. That devil is not playing. He's for real about it. He's seeking whom he may devour. And devour ain't no good thing. It ain't no easy thing either. I'm talking about, that's some hatred. Somebody, something that want to devour you, they want to see you dead. Don't play with that devil because he's not playing. You can think he's playing and that's what he wants you to think. But oh, he want to devour you. Oh, yes. Pastor, last scripture, and then we're going to wrap up with this. Let's go to Revelation 12. I just want you to know who your adversary is. It's not yourself. It's not your flesh. That's good teaching. Good teaching. Your adversary, the devil. Not your mama, not your children, not your brother, not your sister, not your manager, not your leasing office. The devil is your adversary. Revelations 12 and 12. And as I said, there was a war in heaven. And God threw a third of the angels out. And they are mad about it. They're not happy. They're not coming to bless anybody. Even those that serve them. Even those that yield to them, they hate them too. So true. Pastor, I want you to grab verse 9 for me and then uh, let, let's go to 7. Read verse 7 for me, please. Let's take it from 7. Read 7 until I ask you to stop, please. Amen. And there was war in heaven. Uh huh. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Come on. And prevailed not. Neither was that place found anymore in heaven. Mm -hmm. No place for him. Uh-huh. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. Listen. He said, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He's a deceiver. You know anybody that's good at deceiving people? They have you thinking this, but it ain't nothing.
doesn't like what they got you thinking. Their father is behind that. He taught them well. That's true. Man, one thing that I've always told my, I've always told Lenny, my baby boy, I always told him, just don't lie to me. I don't care what you do, just don't lie to me. Tell me the truth and let me just deal with that. You tell me the truth and I probably won't even do nothing about it. Just say, boy, don't do it again. But if you lie to me, it's going to take me to a whole nother level on you. Nobody likes to be deceived. That's right. That's true now. But you have the father behind the deceit doing that to people. That's what he, does. he deceived the whole world. That's right. That's right. When you find out that somebody wasn't who they said they were, <laughs> they've been lying to you. I used to tell my son this all the time. I said, if they don't like you for who you are, they are definitely not going to like you when they find out you're not who you're trying to be. He was a deceiver. He deceived the whole world. But he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. He didn't go by himself. The Lord didn't say, I'm going to give y'all angels another chance. No. Nope. He knew that they had been deceived by the deceiver. And they had to go with him. Because guess what? They had another spirit. They had not the spirit of God any longer. They had been deceived. So they had to go. I love it. Why would you keep somebody that's been deceived around you? Because guess what? They don't go around trying to deceive other people. That's right. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Pastor, and read 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Mm -hmm. Now has come salvation and strength, mm -hmm. and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Listen, he's an accuser. He's a deceiver. Oh my God. You ever seen these spirits working in people? You're now wrestling against flesh and blood. Right. That's right. Accusers, deceivers, liars, whoremongers, fornicators. Oh, all of that over in uh, Galatians chapter 5. That's all the enemy stuff. Them his spirits, those are his ways, not your ways. Not your flesh, that's his stuff. Don't claim that. Don't receive that. Don't believe that. He is an accuser of our brethren, but he was cast down. But guess what? He still is an accuser. He hasn't changed. He ain't got no better. You know a liar that haven't come to Christ, they ain't gonna get better. You know a deceiver that's gonna get better and they ain't got Jesus. It's impossible. That's true. He said, for he is an accuser, which accused them before our God day and night. Don't you know it was just like with Job? He wanted Job to get out of Christ so bad, out of God, and to doubt God and get to talking foolish so that he can accuse Job. See, I told you. Right, right. You think that Job loved you, but it's because you got all them, he got all them things. Job had things. Hey, he did. But God, the enemy, although he was accusing Job, just put that hedge down and I can make him curse you. Didn't he say it? He thought 
for sure. If if I touch them things, Job gonna change. He gonna be. He gonna look at God and blame God for it. That's what he's counting on from every one of us. From every believer, he's counting on you to doubt. And say, man, if I was saved, I wouldn't be going through all of this. Isn't he a liar? He wants you to doubt your God. He wants you to doubt your Savior and your Father. He wants you to talk foolish. He wants you to get angry and say the wrong thing. He wants you to get out of Christ and start acting like you used to be. Acting like him. He wants you to act like him. If you got the cussing and swearing every time somebody did something to you, he wants you to do that. Yeah, come on, come on. God, I'm telling you, they don't care nothing about you. They don't believe you. He's looking for a reason to go to God on you. That's true. That's true. Because he wants God to do you like he did him. You didn't give us a second chance. What is it about man that thou art so mindful of him? You think he like you, Sister Terry? You think he want to see you make it, Gerard? Absolutely not. He's mad about that change. And he's all right as long as you act like you okay. But he going to God saying, you know he ain't doing right. You know she ain't doing right. She over there doing this and that. Right, right, right. You know she a busy body in other men's matters. Now God, you know you, you know she ain't supposed to be doing that. That's what Let me get her. That's what he does. The devil is mad about what God has done for man in general. You gonna go and die for them? And then I didn't know nothing about it. Jesus didn't tell, God didn't tell the devil his plan. He didn't tell the angels because he didn't want to trust it. Y'all, some of them already don't went wrong. So I better keep it to myself. He was that unspeakable gift. He didn't tell nobody about it. Okay, and so let's see, Pastor. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and drop on down to verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heaven. Uh-huh. He said rejoice. And ye that dwell in them. Uh-huh. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Yes. And of the sea. Mm -hmm. For the devil is come down unto you. Mm -hmm. Having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. He said woe. <laughs> that don't sound like nobody that's coming to do the right thing. That don't sound like somebody that's coming to help you and bless you. He said, whoa! Oh, you got somebody that hates you. The Bible said he's come down with great wrath. Having great wrath. You ever seen somebody that's full of wrath? They get to turn up stuff. They'll kill. They'll use their mouth to try to destroy somebody's character. To try to defame somebody. He said, having great wrath. He is mad. He is beyond mad. Wrath is a whole different beast. Somebody that's full of wrath, they are killed. I don't know about y'all, but I've watched the show. And this wrath come over people, and it causes them to kill. And they kill, and then it seems like the spirit come up off of them. Don't take no chances with the enemy, because he's not coming to play. He is coming to kill. 
and he's all right with you going to the building too. Just don't hold to this word. Just don't keep my word. Don't keep my sayings. Don't keep my commandments. Keep on going to church. That's all right. All he cares is that he got you. He got your mind. He got your heart. You serving him again. And loving him with all of that. And you want to give God a little peace? It don't work like that. He said, love the Lord thy God with all. Don't you know if God will all, the devil won't all too? Because he ain't nothing but an imitator. He didn't originate good. He was the originator of evil. Don't be deceived. Your adversary is not yourself. It's not the people that you can see. The devil is behind it. Don't you forget about it. He said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. I don't know what go on down there, but he said, woe to them too. He turned up some stuff. Yes. Because he knoweth that he had but a short time. He know his time was short. Listen, his time was short the day that Jesus came. That's right. His days are numbered. And we don't know the day, but God does. Right. And he knows that his time is short. He just don't know when. Just like Jesus, just like God kept him coming himself to redeem man, he right. kept that to himself. He keep him when he coming back. Right. He ain't telling everybody, ain't nobody gonna know. Because he want, he want to catch you like you are. So if you holy, you're going to be raised holy. When he come, if you are a liar, a whore, a deceiver, an accuser, a backbiter, a discorder. That's how you're going to be raised. And he's going to say, as Sister Valerie taught that lesson, I don't know you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. But we don't have to hear those words. Look, Ephesians chapter 6 said, Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. And his might is his word. His strength is his word. And when he say be strong, it's because you can. Because of him. It's him that give us and make us who we are. When you're walking in strength, it's not your own. It comes from him and then he give it to you. He give it to you. Not to abuse it. So many people abuse the power and the authority that they have. And use it for the wrong reason. But this power that he give us. It's for himself to be shown. It's for him to be magnified. For him to get the glory. It's not of us. That's why I love it. It's not a work. Works least any man should boast. Right oh, if we going to boast, our boast should be in the Lord. Right. He did it. 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 Right. Not look at me. Look at me. I did. I did. I'm this. I'm that. I, 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 I. Do you like being around somebody and all they talk about is themselves? It's kind of disgusting. If all you hear is somebody talking about themselves, if you not Jesus, who do you think is really interesting? People want to hear about something good. And that good is God. There's none good but one. And we thank God for him tonight. I thank God for his word. God is moving by his spirit. And he's getting, he wants his people to be at a place. I don't know if you all can hear it in the spirit, but he's bringing us to a place so That's that we right. can help other people. That's the right. strength that you have is so that 
you can help somebody else. Yes, 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 yes. It's not just for you to muscle up and say, I'm strong. What good is that if your strength can't help anybody else? Right. Right. Yes. I'm grateful tonight because God could have chosen anyone to do what he's called every one of us to do. Now you got to make your calling and election sure. You got to walk worthy of the vocation where you've been called. Can't nobody do it for you. But God can do it through you. Jesus can do it through you. And that's what he wants our confidence to be in is him. When he said be strong, he said in the Lord. And that means you got to learn about him. You got to learn his ways. You learn his characteristics. It's taught to you. He told them, he said, look, I am meek and lonely in heart. So you got to learn that. And what better way than the things that you go through? Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And so the things he learned, he learned how to be quiet. He opened not his mouth when he was led before the sheriffs. He opened not his mouth. You learn that. And they come from opening your mouth when it should be shut. And so God knows he's watching every last one of us. He cares about us too. It doesn't matter where you are right now. He want to help you. He don't send his word to beat you up, beat you down, kick you around. He don't do it for that. He sent his word to help you and to prepare you. Because he know every day. Uh, uh, my mother-in-law used to say, this is just everyday life. He know you're going to experience everyday life and it's okay. The thing about it is having him and being strong in him. Don't be strong in your own self. Don't be stubborn and rebellious. Don't be a forgetful hearer that just as sure as you hear it tonight, you walk out the door and can't remember nothing. Because as soon as you leave, you go to talking about this, this, and that instead of magnifying the word. Magnify him instead of your situation. Magnify him instead of what you got going on in your head. Right. And see, you want to help somebody else. If you always talking about you, how you helping me? But if you talk about Jesus, you watch somebody's strength get renewed. You watch a smile come on their face. You watch them start walk, uh, rocking. And before you know it, they'll out, out sing the song, uh, I'll sing you. Because you magnified him and not yourself. That's where the power is. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Stand with me uh, to your feet tonight. Lord, we thank you for your word. Bless us tonight to hide this word in our hearts. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let it be in our hearts that we don't sin against you. Let it be, Lord. Those that needed help tonight, we hope that they receive this engrafted word. God bless it to be in their conscience day and night. Yes. Help them to meditate on your law day and night that they may have good success. Yes, Lord. Bless them to be strong in you. Know who their strength is. Not trusting in the arm of flesh, but trusting in you. You know every need, not just in this place, but to anyone that may tune in. You know the need, and we ask you to meet that need tonight. Those that are weak, let them say, I'm strong. Give them to mount up with wings as eagles. To run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Make them like the tree planted by the rivers of water. That bring forth your fruit. In their season. God we can do nothing without you. But with you all things are possible. And we ask you to have your way in us. Bless us God. Yes Lord. Take us higher, take us deeper, that we may be just like you, conformed in your image. 
walking in the newness of life. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your word tonight. Thank you, Lord. Your word is you. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for having you with us. Thank you. Thank no matter where we go, who we around, you are with us. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it tonight. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name and give you the praise. These things we ask in your name. All of God's people say, Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand praise. Amen.